And it's uh, 203 roughly by my phone, or 204 now. So let's call the meeting to order, and uh, I'd like to have uh, everybody make sure their cell phones are silent or muted, if you can. Uh, and we'll begin with the roll call, but before we do that, uh, yeah, let's do that first, and then we'll go through the audit. Uh, introductions. Go ahead, Kelly. Commissioner Kanda. Present. Commissioner Flower. Present. Commissioner Prince. Present. Attorney Clint Smith. Present. And clerk to the board, Kelly Camper, present. Okay, we're all kind of present. Let's uh, go through audience introductions. And before we start, uh, please say your name clearly, loudly, and slowly. Kelly's going to make every attempt to write it down, and we'll, uh, we'll make sure everybody gets accounted for it go from here. So the first one uh, I would like to, uh, I'll just call off a name that I heard uh, log in and that would be Ann Parker if you there. Start off. Uh, here. Now, names now, go ahead next. Marilyn. Alive and good. Ann Wilson. Those two got Alex jammed. Alex Anderson. Merrill and Tennessee. Next. Ashley Franklin. Cool. Say again. That's cool. Did you copy that, Kelly? No, I didn't. It's best cold, C O L E. Thank you. Colin Blanchard. What was your first name? Polly. Polly. P O L L Y. Mm -hmm. Got it. Thank you. Julie Smith. Ron Beckner. Jackie Bubis. Next. Sandy Dalton. Got it. Stu Gilstorf. Say that again. Stu Gilstorf. G I S R F. Desiree Lipka. Got it. Bob Hollingsworth. Got it. Jordan Hedberg. Got it. I think there were three people that introduced themselves in the beginning, like around Alyssa and Alex, that I did not get. Did you get Craig Mail? No. Meredith Nichols. Okay. Tracy Ballard. Okay. Did you get Ann Barthrop and Ann Wilson? Yep. Susanna Ferry. Susanna, got it. I 
I've got 23 total now. What do you, what do you show, Brian? I am looking at 26, so that would be me and the uh, commissioners in addition to 23. Okay. Terry, go okay. over. Go ahead, say again. Terry, go over. Got it. And that's 28. Maybe you should read back the names on the list, and anybody not on the list then can respond. It may be quickest. That's the easiest way to do it. Okay, so Alyssa Livengood, Alex Anderson, Marilyn Hennessy, Ashley Franklin, Bess Cole, Polly Blanchard, Julie Smith, Ron Beckner, Jackie Bubis, Cindy Flower, Sandy Dalton, Sue Gils Gilsdorf, Desiree Lipka, Bob Hollingsworth, Jordan Hedberg, Craig Mail, Meredith Nichols, Tracy Ballard, Susanna Ferry, Vernon Roth, Terry Gulliver. You didn't read off the ad bar. Oh, yes. yeah, I've got you on another list. <laughs> I've okay. got you, yeah. Anybody else not called? Kathy Rice. Okay. Okay, I think uh, we can press on then, uh, and we uh, will look at uh, several things uh, uh, before we get started with the meet. And that is, uh, if, from a men the agenda point of view, the only thing I would consider is uh, that what Mountain Valley Saddle Club is, is really wrapped up in the consideration of lifting restrictions. So it's they have plans that we we uh, have developed some key things for already, and uh, along with some others. And I'll get into that in just a second. Uh, I don't think there's anything else to amend. Uh, anything from you, Tom? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I have three amendments to the agenda I would propose today, and I would like to have them handled in the order that I propose them. Okay. I would move to strike the first item of business. Well, let, let me, um, before we get into that, then let me do a preamble of what I, what I need to say first, then. And then we'll do that. So, so let me let me start this way. Then. Well, you have a motion on the floor, sir. I didn't hear a second. I'll second it. Then moved and second to strike that item, and uh, I would uh, object to that personally, and, I, I'm, and I'll tell you why in the discussion. Well, let's read read the actual uh, item on the. Okay, the actual. Is for the, I, I, Read it verbatim. I'm going to read it exactly as I wrote it. Condition, uh, consideration of lifting all restrictions and opening the county up. Now, let me get into the discussion that uh, is the reason that's worded the way it is. And we can uh, consider what to do next. I want to, first of all, I want to thank everybody for uh, attending. Uh, and it's in, your input really very important. As a matter of fact, you all have, many of you have sent in letters, uh, both pro and con to each and every one of us, the three commissioners, uh, the Board of Health members here. It does make a difference to us in making critical decisions, and, and whether or not we strike this uh, first of, of item, it is, they're all critical. Uh, we realize that anything we decide will have a huge impact on our small and fragile community. Today, the Board of Health, the reason we're meeting is to make decisions about our next steps forward. I assure you that we're not going to be back to pre-virus yet with no thought or intent on, of the, or understanding of the inherent dangers or how we would get there. We're going to 
be using our best informed data, and you'll hear that later on as we get into our reports and the data that we've asked our public health director to provide for us. Uh, and the judgment and our best informed judgment, uh, plus community input such as yours that are all on the phone today or that have been handing in their comments to act, uh, help us act responsibly as we move forward. My intent today is to consider how we begin uh, proactive or to develop a proactive process to get back to that normal. That's why I worded the agenda. I consider all restrictions. Chairman, this is not Dr. Uh, to the motion on the floor. That, yeah, this is discussion. Aren't we discussing that? No, you're giving a speech. All right. Okay. I, I, <laughs> I'm sorry. You're right. I'll, I'll, I'll get back to the uh, formality of it. Uh, do I have a uh, – we'll call for the vote on it. Or, uh, excuse me, we have a, uh, a, a motion on the floor. It's been moved and seconded. Now, I'm it up fine if you want to discuss the motion – I just didn't want to hear a speech about everybody having their opportunity. Okay, okay, you know, listen, to you. Uh, I don't care. Uh, you know, I, I listen to your speeches, too, and I understand. I'll make it quick and to the point. The point that I was getting to is we need to consider them all, and the most pressing items are the July 4th parade, the Custer County Fair, and the rodeo. Those are items that are just the most proactive. Point, point of order. Uh, I don't expect to, to get into the uh, um, into the today's meeting to solve the how and all the things that, that we're worried I'm going to get into. Uh, just uh, for a point of order, Mr. Chairman, if I can make a comment. Go you ahead. May have, you may have heard many of my speeches, and I agree that I do that. I have never made a speech when there was a motion on the floor that was not your okay. motion. I want the record well, to reflect that. Well, I was trying to make a comment or a discussion on the motion, so I'm sorry that there's a motion on the floor. Discussion, Tom. Uh, yeah. When I called you in Virginia and asked you if you would consider scheduling a board of health meeting, uh, my request was so that we could give consideration to restrictions pertaining to the fair, the rodeo, the Fourth of July parade, and the sale committee. That's one of the reasons that I made the motion to strike this uh, first item of business. I indicated to you in an email, I will read that. Let me pull that up real quick.
I'm sorry to interrupt. It sounds like Tom is in a wind tunnel and we can hardly hear him. Mr. Canada, can you hear me? Yeah, I heard you. And let me repeat this. I'm going to read the letter as it was written. Tom, and they have paraphrased it. Let me read it so everybody can hear it. This is what I sent out. I said, I, and after a series of BOCC and Board of Health meetings with observing conditions within the state, and this is after I talked with you too. At court meetings, along with many discussions with citizens of the county, I propose to schedule for the health meeting on the 12th as you have asked for as well uh, at 2 o'clock. Please let me know if you're available. And I said the purpose will be, quote, discuss slash consider lifting all restrictions and open up Custer County. The suggested agenda should include a report on current status of COVID-19 conditions statewide surrounding counties and within Custer County, a quick discussion of factors within the county that bear on this decision, i.e. Ann Wilson's letter, uh, and I, I suppose I invited her to answer questions. That was the request we had from Jay Prince during no, that last meeting. That's in the letter. That's in the letter I sent you. I never asked for her to defend her letter. Yeah, you did. You said you wanted to hear. You have never heard... Uh, and then it would be good for her to hear she wasn't there to do that, and that's why I proposed that. And, and, and to look at benefits versus risk, et cetera. And I said, effective date slash time, and I asked for other thoughts. You gave, you came back to me, Tom, and had other thoughts that you were uncomfortable with, uh, listing all restrictions. And I agreed with you and said, that's true. However, we've got to get the, the process moving, and you can't set the bar down low. You want to consider restrictions if you're going to deal with it. The Board of Health has to deal with it. That doesn't mean we solve it for sense or how in this meeting. It means we do the most pressing thing, that's those discussion and that we should have on this um, item, uh, agenda item. Uh, and I was in the middle of uh, saying that I agree with you. So I don't expect the next I would ask if we could ask somebody to mute their phones. Yeah, we do need all the phone music, please. No, but Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. So if I could continue. Um, all right, go ahead. So then my response back was, thanks for the note. I'm not sure I'm comfortable with your statement of, quote, lifting all restrictions. I think from my point of view, that might be overstated. The Board of Health will have to make those kinds of decisions. I want to move forward in a responsible manner. End of, right. end of the text on the email. Uh, the reason I introduced the motion to strike, I don't think it's appropriate. Um, obviously, uh, for some reason, you chose to word that item on the agenda as you did. And as a result, certainly, we all got hammered um, with that emails in a panicked response that we were going to lift all restrictions. I want the record to clearly show I never requested that. I requested okay. the Board of Health meeting to consider the restrictions for the fair, the rodeo, the 4th of July parade, and the livestock sale committee. And the record re uh, reflects that. And, uh, and I, like I said, the reason I said it the way I did was to get exactly what happened. We need public input and, and understanding that this Board of Health, the public health agency, is a great job of listening and working with the citizens of this county and to, to give them comfort in knowing that on either side of the fence that they're on. Um, and that's why it was and no intent to go any further than that. And I agree. Go ahead, Jay. Mr. Chairman, I, I think... The entire community is very concerned as the entire state and the entire country and the whole world is worried about coronavirus. I think if you want to elicit um, responses from our citizens, putting in a false statement that you didn't intend That's to not make, false. you didn't intend to make it, should never have been put in here. Just a point of order for me. Okay, that's your opinion. I appreciate that. Thank you, Jay. You're welcome. Uh, Thank you. And uh, I appreciate that. And that was the intent that we have to consider restrictions in order to move forward. That was my only point. No, not Main, listing that was, restrictions and opening the county listen. up is misleading. If that's not what you intended. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, eventually, I did. We are going to open the county up at some point. Okay. I'm sorry I uh, didn't write it as eloquently as you could. Yeah, yeah, I understand. So, let's make sure it's clear. I, I agree. Do this. I'm going to call previous questions, sir. All right, let's vote. Jake? I vote aye. 
your vote, Mr. Chairman? By voting no, yeah. by voting no, you're in favor of lifting all the restrictions and opening up Custer County? Is no, I'm, right? I'm in favor. No, no, that wasn't the agenda. I, my, okay, my leaving agenda, it on the agenda. I, it, it, okay, it, it I'm was fine. Considered, okay? Okay, it wasn't you're, you're correct. At all what that that's meant. I wanted to get the discussion going, and that's all it meant. So and at this time, and eventually we will be lifting restrictions. That's all we, I wanted to get to the point. That's why I voted no. So don't put words in my mouth to make it look like I'm an evil demon here. Thank you. So the result of the vote? Two to one. Not about removing this agenda item. Okay. Now that's I second amendment, proposed amendment to the agenda.
say something if notice is given, the request can be made. So I'm just giving notice of what I'd like to do. If it's applicable. What do you think, Clint? I think he can reserve the right to add an additional amended item or make an additional amendment to the agenda later. Yeah, and, and I will also do the same thing because I have a thought as well. Thank you. Okay. Good deal. All right. Uh, what I'd like to do next uh, is have a report from the uh, board members, Tom um, Jay. Then what I'll ask for is the uh, public health uh, director to give us the, the data that we're going to need to do the, the discussion for today's meeting. Okay, approval uh, minutes. And Bill? Bill, we have minutes. Yeah, I'll get this. That's right. We've got the minutes next. I'm sorry. I'll, go ahead. I'll go ahead and move. We approve the uh, minutes from the June 4th Board of Health meeting. I'll second that, please. Moved and seconded to approve the minutes of June 4th. Any discussion? They were well done. Uh, sorry, I, I've got them. I was just trying to get them open. Uh, I appreciate Kelly's efforts to uh, get to the <coughs> I know between that and the BOCC, she's got eight or nine sets of minutes in front of her that she's trying to work on. So, yeah. Appreciate that. Yeah, I do too. That was very good, Kelly. Thanks. And I'm sorry I skipped over the minutes because I had everything written down. So, well, thank you for correction, and uh, let's hear the vote. Okay. Aye. Tom? Aye. And uh, aye. down to this new, newly amended agenda. First was consideration of the uh, well, I had I had written it down for the uh, consideration for the uh, air and uh, which, which order was it? Let's get the order straightened out. Okay, are we going to have reports to the board members? Or no? Yes, I just wanted, I wanted to get the agenda item straight out first Tom. just let me write okay. it down go ahead say them again well uh, according to my notes item number one on the agenda is consideration of restrictions for four events number two is to consideration of further opening the county buildings number three is the wet mountain valley saddle club covid plans for the rodeo that's my record that's what I got now. Okay. All right. So let's hear uh, any other reports from the board members. Go ahead, Jay. Uh, the only thing I have to report is we met with the deputy director of uh, the Colorado uh, Health Department this morning. The three of us did. But it was extremely enlightening and kind of has me rethinking what I was thinking earlier. But when we can actually get into it, we'll talk about it. Um, I also would like to say that I've gotten, I've received probably 60 or 70 emails on the topic of reopening the county because they were all relying on um, what was on the agenda, opening it for everything. And now that we have that clear, I'm feeling much better about that. So that's basically my report. Um. Yeah, I obviously I, all three of us sat in on the uh, phone call this morning as board of health with uh, with Karen, um, who is actually part of her title as a public relations director for the CDPAG, uh, and I also received. 
quality, but I also want to let everybody know the minute an email hits a commissioner's uh, Board of Health or a BOCC commissioner, it is subject to the Colorado Open Records Act and therefore uh, has the potential of becoming public record. But I want to thank those people to take the time to uh, encourage us to do the right thing for this county. Uh, I would have given about anything to have gotten those emails two or three weeks ago when, uh, I'll speak for myself, when I was getting beat up because we wouldn't do what uh, the vocal minority of this county wanted us to do, and that was to just throw the doors wide open and play the heck with it. So I just felt good about getting those emails. That is for sure. That it? Yes, sir. Okay, same thing. From me, the meeting we had, by the way, her title is deputy director to CDPAT as well, and uh, was very, very good. And, and, and I was encouraged by their willing, her willingness to help us as we go through these steps and all the steps eventually that we're going to go through to get back to normal. And they're willing to work with us. Also, I'm encouraged by all of the letters I got. Been beaten up also on both sides of this issue, and I would be very hesitant. To, uh, you stated the, the, mi the minority, vocal minority. I don't know that that's true. I, you know, I, I would be careful about that. Well, that was, um, that was just my wording and my perspective. I'm not speaking. I understand that. Board of the Health. Right, and, and I'm, I'm going to say the same thing. I appreciate both both sides of the argument, and I was encouraged by people paying attention to what's going on. And by the way, from my perspective, I was elected to do the right thing with the, uh, the citizens of this county, just as each of us are. To, to, and that's why we are here today, because we're qualified you know, from a citizen's point of view to make those decisions that impact their, their lives. That's what we're there to do. So I appreciate it. That's why I value this meeting even more to get into it, because these are uh, very delicate decisions that affect life and death and the economic viability of our county. Thank you all for, for that. Uh, and that's the end of uh, my report. So next, if there's any other comments on sports, I would like to get into uh, to the items. Uh, and I would like to ask, uh, you know, the public is allowed in from my point of view, and it will be to make comments as we vote on these items. And I still believe uh, that uh, we have uh, a letter uh, that was given to us last meeting, and, and if we don't believe it needs answers uh, now, it should be answers during the discussion on, on these, um, or at the end of the meeting, we'll, we'll open it up for public comment in general as well, as we always do. And uh, we we'll, think that's appropriate. Yep, and uh, and we'll we'll wait to the uh, we'll we'll get into it. Normally we open it up and allow a general comment at the front of the meeting, but in the interest of time, working and harder than ever to keep pros working. Excuse me. Background noise, I assume. I think so. So let's uh, let's move on then. Uh, we've got the uh, consolidation of the four items to consider. So we'll I'll leave it up to you. Uh, Tom, open up the first uh, item to discuss. Thank you. Got it on there. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, please don't re forget staff reports. Oh, uh, wait a minute. Uh, yeah, before we do that, that's absolutely right. Uh, thank you, Melissa. We, we do need to have her staff report, and we do need to get the data out on the tables. So everybody understands what, what we're, we're considering to, as we talk through these issues. So go ahead, Melissa. Very good item. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, so first I'd just like to report on um, just raw statistics that we have in Custer County and surrounding counties in the state of Colorado. So in the state of Colorado, we currently have 28,499 people have been tested positive for COVID, or have, been, have come up positive for COVID out of uh, 227,761. There's been 1,312 deaths in the state of Colorado. Um, in Custer County, we have now 
34 people tested, um, still the original two positive um, and recovered. We have two pending at this point. Um, I just want to give a little perspective as to what's going on around us. Um, Fremont County currently has 26 positive cases, Chaffee County and zero deaths. Chaffee, Chaffee County has 78 positive cases with 20 deaths. Orfano County has three cases with zero deaths. Pueblo County has 329 cases with 19 deaths. Um, and Swatch County has 94 cases with two deaths. Uh, Swatch County recently reopened um, quite a bit more with their variance approval and saw a significant spike of, um, I believe, over 10 cases in the last week. So I um, want to keep that in mind. Also, I, I like to compare us to Delta County because demographically and geographically they're um, pretty close to us. They have 46 cases with one death. Um, with 1,404 people tested. So um, when I say that our county is a lot like theirs, that demographic or that um, statistic is quite a bit different than ours, obviously, because they've tested a whole lot more people than we have. Um, I think, I, I feel pretty confident that if we tested 1,404 people, we would likely have close to 50 positives at least as well. Um, so I, I also just want to reiterate that I really feel that the reason why our cases have been and continue to be low are because of the restrictions that have been in place and the fact that the, the members of this community um, as a whole and as a majority have been compliant with the orders thus far. Um, I... Uh, I'd like to go back to Mr. Kanda, what you said originally about that, that you wanted us to just, that you made the comment on the agenda so that we could be working towards opening up. And I, I take a little offense to that because I feel like we've been working towards opening up and what to do best for the community since the very beginning. So that's not like a brand new thing that you just came up with out of this last meeting. Um, so that being said, a few more things that I need to talk about. Um, there are more, um, there, there seems, um, so there, there are several businesses besides the, the South Club, the parade, the rodeo uh, fair that are looking at opening up, and they are all asking for, I mean, I'm, and I'll, I'll just say it, like a few of the, the summer camps, um, Jones Theater, some of the just kids' camps, the, the um, dance studio, they are more than well, more than happy to go with guidelines that we put forth that are within the restrictions of the state orders. Um, I have only heard a handful of people that have been extremely vocal about quote uh, opening up the county. So I'm not willing to fold to those few vocal people when the majority of the, of the things that I've heard are positive for our enforcement so far. Um, I yeah, as well comment. have received... Can sure. I throw in a comment real quick, uh, Alyssa? Yeah. Yeah, my motion was to address those four specific things. I, I fully expected to deal today with uh, the camps, the things that you had presented to us, those plans at our last Board of Health meeting. I was not trying to exclude those. Um, obviously, my intent was to make sure we dealt with the four things that uh, that we had said we would to the folks at the last Board of Health meeting. I thought you did a good job of presenting the plans for the camps and uh, uh, don't have a problem moving forward with those myself. Thanks, Tom, and I appreciate you saying that because, but the reason why I was mentioning all these other businesses was just to um, reiterate the point that there are lots of businesses and people in this community who are willing to comply with the orders and open up um, slowly as suggested instead of just throwing the doors wide open and, and going with a complete opening. Okay, and, and so listen, my comment too on that same thing, you have that we even brought it up at the last meeting that we have been being very proactive 
within the guideline of uh, get, working our variances as we can, as best we can. And, and you have done a good job doing that. I've been that you weren't doing that. Um, Mr. Chairman? Go ahead. Question. Listen, do you think it's appropriate for us to address uh, those other businesses today? That's a good question. Um, I I think that we should talk about businesses in general. So, I mean, I, I don't want to get in the weeds with, you know, Joan Theater and the dance studio and whatever, but I think if we discuss businesses in general, that would be appropriate. Um, I don't want anybody in the community to feel like all we care about are the four items that we talked about, um, because obviously the whole community is important. Um, but I also don't want to be have all of us on this meeting till midnight talking about every single thing. So I think if we just talked about businesses as a whole, that would be appropriate. That was aside from problem. the four. Excuse me for a second, I agree with you, but but that was the whole intent of what I was trying to get across in the first place is that we do at some point need to address all the businesses and where they are and what we've been doing because we've been we have made significant progress. And that doesn't mean that there isn't more to do uh, with the focus on these other three items as well. But um, in an attempt to try to get done tonight, uh, we want to keep it as, as succinct as we can. I appreciate that. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I um, I agree with that. And I, um, I, I think that we sometimes get a little bit distracted by, I mean, the old adage, the squeaky wheel gets the grease, and so we, we get distracted by that squeaky wheel and forget about the rest of the vehicle sometimes. So um, so that all being said, that's that's pretty much my report from there. However, I would like to bring to your attention an email that I sent to all the board this morning um, regarding my letter of resignation. I plan to resign. To resign from this position um, as soon as possible. I wrote in my letter that I will that I'm willing to stay until someone is hired and trained in my position. Um, I will. Um, I, I'm part of the reason why I'm <coughs> resigning at this point is because I will. I'm opening a home health business in this county that should be ready to go by the fall, um, and that. So I'd like to get a, someone trained for this position before I'm too busy to with with my home health business to do public health. Um, the other caveat to that that I wrote in that in my report. Oh my gosh, now I'm nervous. I can't even think what I wrote in there. Um, hang on one second. Mr. Chair, could you read the letter of resignation into the record? Sure can. Would you like me to? Okay. We can hear you. Did you find it? I have it, yeah. Uh, like, I can just read it to you. Yeah, I've got it. So, um, Dear Mr. Flower, Mr. Prince, and Mr. Tanda, please accept this formal notice of my resignation from the position of Custer County Public Health Director, effective as soon as a replacement can be hired and trained. Should a replacement not be available by the time my personal business requires more of my attention than can be given, or the duties and ramifications of the job become more than I or my family can bear going forward, I will announce a two-week completion date. I am submitting this now so that the search for a new director can begin immediately. After careful consideration, I have made the decision to resign in order to pursue a new business for Custer County that a valued colleague and I are establishing to provide home health care for the community. Working for Custer County Public Health has been a wonderful experience that has afforded me many valuable and treasured opportunities to learn and grow. I am very honored to have been a part of this organization. I wish you and Custer County Public Health continued growth and success in the future. Sincerely, Alyssa Lightingale. Thank you, Alyssa. I have nothing further. Thank you. And we reluctantly accept your resignation when, whenever it uh, can be made to, uh, for you. The best if your your our schedule and yours both. Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Um, Of accepting Alyssa Livinga's resignation. All right. 
been moved. I'll be second. Anybody second? Okay. I'll second it. It's been moved and seconded to accept with the live and goods resignation. No, sir. No, sir. I move to amend the agenda by adding oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. consideration I, I, of. Yeah. It's been moved uh, and seconded to amend the agenda to consideration of Alyssa Lighting Goods resignation. Okay? I still second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to amend the agenda. Jay, how do you vote? Could 
be done and i think this entire county everybody needs to give you a big thank you i personally thank you and i i really wish you the absolute best in what you're going to do in the future and at my age i'll be needing you i'm sure thanks jay <laughs> All right, so ready to move on. Any other comments? I have none. I have none. All right. Oh, for the boat, did we? Right. I gotta get Brady here. Jay. Reluctantly, I. Tom. Regrettably, I. And uh, I. Okay. Thank you for the report. And we can move on. Uh, we've mentioned but we'll have public comment uh, as we progress on each of the items. So, and then at the end, we'll open it up for some general comment. All right. Go ahead. Travelers. 
can be found in its, in its entirety at the, the included um, HTML address, which I won't read. It's fairly lengthy. Uh, there is a, a signature lines on the bottom of this document for the organization, the name of the organization, the date of the event, the organization representative, and the date of the signature, and then uh, ask for a VOCC chair signature and date, Board of Health signature chair, uh, sorry, Board of Health chair signatures and date, and the Public Health Director signature and date. So the intent, as I read and understand this document, is this is a document that the public health agency is giving to the Board of Health that if we so choose to pass on to an organization that wants to have an activity, uh, we are citing them what the current orders that are in place are and asking them to sign this document to verify that we in good faith and due diligence provided them with those guidances. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I move that we adopt the guidance for parades, rodeos, and fairs as presented by our public health director, as written. I'll second. second. Yeah. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to accept the guidance as written for parades. Rodeos and fair. Yeah, rodeos and fair. Discussion. Yeah, I'd like to, even though the title does not have this in here, the actual body does refer specifically to parades um, and also uh, adult and youth sports tournaments that attract crowds and travelers. My comment would be that this is not something that Alyssa pulled out of the air and made up at the detriment of Custer County. I'd like to reiterate that this is the public health order from the Colorado State, uh, and it's Order 20-28. Um, the variances that we've asked for are, are in effect. Um, I'd also like to state that we learned today that if the county intentionally ignores any of the state mandates, as this one is, that potentially the county could lose somewhere in the neighborhood of $300,000 in funding the state can withhold for noncompliance to the COVID orders. I just want to put that on the record. Okay. Uh, if I may, uh, also for the record, uh, I would like to state, uh, reiterate that I asked the uh, Public, Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment rep we spoke with on the phone this morning. Deputy Director. Deputy Director, are these orders, are they recommendations, are they laws, and if they're laws, please cite the CRS numbers so that we can uh, pass those on to our citizens. I got absolutely no response when it came to that. Uh, certainly, we discussed about... Um, my apologies, I thought I had it turned down. Uh, we certainly discussed this, uh, what appeared to be, in my opinion, uh, some kind of a strong arm tactic. When we don't obey these orders or these recommendations, then we are susceptible to having funding pulled. She categorically denied that that was not the case and that she hoped we wouldn't. Uh, view it as that. I don't know how in the hell else we're supposed to view it. If you don't do our orders, you could stand to lose your funding. Uh, I don't know what else that is. So um, I, I just think that okay. we need to try to be mindful of the orders and recommendations and as organizations in this community and county have done, uh, Make the right decision. Don't you don't have to have government overreach to tell you what to do. You make the right decision. It's our job and due diligence to make sure they're aware of the orders that have come from the governor's office. Thank you. Okay. Thanks for your comment.
comments, both of you. Also, I'll make a comment uh, uh, when we did discuss this with her, the Deputy Director for DDPHE, uh, I also echoed the concerns and, and said to me, it sounds like extortion, the way she presented it, the way she came on it, that we would you, you, we will withhold funding or we could withhold funding, she said. Uh, she uh, was apologetic about the tone and, uh, and it's not intended to be viewed as a, uh, you know, you will do this and there'll be no money. So that's what she said, but she, uh, she wouldn't back off, as Tom pointed out, uh, the potential of losing the money. And that's what, uh, I don't, I don't, that's why this particular document called guidance my view. They are guidelines. Uh, there are you know, not the uh, uh, legislative uh, action that has taken place that by the uh, state legislature enacting this into law. So that's why we have to act responsibility of responsibly, like I mentioned up front, and it should be done on a case-by-case -case basis. And, uh, and that's what this document does. It, 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 uh, it acknowledges that, and we will consider each business or parade or rodeo or fair or whatever the uh, item may be uh, as they present it to be the best for us and how it fits the county, not the Denver City or other uh, metropolitan areas. That's so it's not a one-size-fits-all, and she did admit that. It's not one-size-fits-all, but uh, she, they're doing their best. Any other comments? We accept public comments? Yes. Yes, Bob Hollingsworth. Uh, was there any mention about the uh, what I would consider the extreme violation and all the recent demonstrations that have been occurring? Uh, certainly, they weren't in compliance with any of these rules that I've heard this morning. No, there was not. No. Can we just so we just blow those off? Is that it? That's what it does. Yeah, right. It was not discussed, Bob. I appreciate your comment. Uh, they, uh, you know, it, uh, and I think. The reason it wasn't is for the same reasons you're bringing up. Uh, you know, they're they're trying to avoid it. I believe, my view, just my opinion. Well, uh, if I can, Mr. Chairman, can I can I respond to that? Uh, sure, go ahead. Uh, first of all, I believe my stance on this is probably going to cost me a re-election, but I really don't care if that's the case because I'm going to follow what's morally right, not politically right. The reason these mandates are coming down is because they're trying to keep the folks in this county, this country safe. And while we have a minimal exposure, as soon as we open up the gates, let people from all over the country come to our rodeos and our fairs and whatever, without the proper precautions, I am certain in my heart, I have no data to back this up, that we will see a significant spike. To refer to um, General Hollinsworth comment, um, I did see that parade walk by in front of me with the Black Lives Matters and police intervention, that kind of thing. They all wore masks and they were separated, but that is not the issue. The issue is, as of this date, and I believe probably for the future, this county has never issued a single citation or arrested a single person who violated any mandate or order or recommendation that came down from the state. I suspect, although I will not say definitively, I suspect if, the, if this passes and the rodeo folks decide to have a rodeo anyway, I don't think we're going to have the state police charge into the stadium and start arresting people. I mean, that is just not what's going to happen. So people, this is America. We have a right to do within limits what we want to do. And if you choose to violate the orders, so be it. And that's in my mind. But I, as a, as a public health official in this capacity, and as a commissioner who's responsible for the well-being of this community, I will not back down, and I may be voted off, but that's fine. I will not back down that we will administer as best I can the mandates that are coming down from public health because I think they are correct they're coming from the state. It's not our public health doing it. And I think it is the right, just, and moral thing to do. And I'm done with that. Thank you. Hey, thank you for your one, comment, Jay. General? Jay, one size fits all, right? I'm not 
not going to argue this with you, General. I'm just telling you how it works. If it's good for the goose, it's good for the gander. Well, uh, you know, it's okay. an awfully emotional thing. It's driven by fear. You know, so I understand that, Jay. And that is your opinion, sir. And, and all right, that's, we, we've got the comment. Let me make a uh, comment. Uh, let, me, let me just follow yes. up. There, in, in the United States, 130,000, excuse me, 113,000 people have died from coronavirus. There's currently over 400,000 positive cases in the United States alone. Worldwide, over 400,000 people have died because of coronavirus, and there's over 600, 6 million cases worldwide that have been confirmed. This is not a trivial thing. Think of the Rose Bowl full of everything, every single seat filled, and all those people dead. That's how many people died of coronavirus, and saying it's trivial is not per appropriate. Uh, Commissioner? Right. Uh, Go ahead. Who, who's speaking? Uh, Bill? This is Ann Wilson. Okay, Ann, go ahead. Make your comment. Uh, the reason that I have been concerned is that the high rate of suicide in Colorado, we're seventh in the nation, is not just an idle thing. And this virus has made it increased and increased the probability of that because of isolation and the key question when we're dealing with severe depression and anxiety is do you have a support system and it is friends and family and they need to be able to interact together. Okay, good, good point. Thank you, Ann. Uh, other comment from the public, and I'm going to make a comment at the end here on Jay's comment here. Uh, Bill, this sir. is Ann Barthrop. Go ahead, Ann. Um, I just wanted to comment on the threat of losing 300000 in funding, and that, when you take and divide it out amongst the businesses, is less than 1000 a business. The threat of losing millions and having companies shut down is much stronger than the threat from the state. Okay, good, good, very good point. Thanks, Dan. Hey, Bill, this is Meredith. Can I speak to something? Okay, Meredith, and then there's somebody else behind that. We'll get to you. All right, uh, Meredith. Thanks. So I just want to say that there isn't a business not open currently. I understand that there's percentage of occupancy and um, people are still, you know, concerned to, to get out in the public, which, I mean, it's a valid concern because the risk isn't gone. But I just want to remind everyone that businesses are, there's no business currently closed because by force or by regulation within the county. Mr. Chair? Uh, Bill, a comment to that? That may be okay. true. But they are being forced because of economics to consider other options, such as closing, bankruptcy, etc. And, and you've made that comment. Okay. What oh. business are you referring to? I mean, make a blanket comment like that without any facts is irresponsible. And I, I, I believe I have the most oh. comment right now. Uh, and, and okay. Hold one. Who's speaking? Hold one. Craig, second. I'm Craig Mail. Who's this? Craig Mail, M-A-Y-L-E. Gotcha, Craig. Go ahead, and then I heard uh, Tom. So I'm heartened back. by the response to the Anne's that, that was just given because, uh, you know, economics, yes, that, that is uh, having an impact on the businesses. There are no restrictions in place that... Uh, are, are restricting businesses that would be open to the uh, magnitude uh, that uh, Ms. Arthur referred to of millions of dollars. So I don't think the threat of the state withholding funding for us going rogue and not complying with their restrictions is greater than the threat of capacity limitation. Not to mention this is all very short-sighted. People feel safe going out when there are these kinds of restrictions 
if you know that Tony's is going to be packed to the brim, you're not going to consider going there if you are vulnerable or if you're in contact with vulnerable people. It would be irresponsible. These restrictions are what's necessary to keep the economy open. Arizona is having to look at shutting down again because the cases are going up. So we need to do what we can to keep our cases at the level that they're at so that we don't have to consider. And I okay. also want to add, as, as my final comment here, that uh, I would like to get back to work, and I feel like my time has been wasted by Commissioner Sandy, but it's been quite in that item, and I enthusiastically call for his resignation. We couldn't hear Say, say, say that again, because you, you cut out whose resignation. Say again. The Commissioner Candace. I, I think uh, he's acted completely irresponsibly throughout this especially with causing a public uproar with an inflammatory agenda item today. Okay, thank you for your comment. Mr. Chair. Tom. Uh, we've been at it an hour and 20 minutes. I move to take about a four-minute recess. And I'll second that. Let's make your calls. Okay, we'll take a four-minute recess. I agree. Thank Back you. in the uh, We'll resume at the 525. Uh, we'll make it an even. Uh, I think we missed 325. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> 325. Before we've got discussion, we just got done with uh, Ann Barthrop uh, and Hollingsworth. Any other and uh, uh, any other comment? I'd like to make a comment if I could, Mr. John. Who is this? Ron Beckner. Ron, you're you're on. Thank you. Just uh, kind of doing some background checking and fact checking as well. And, and I got on Worldometer, um, and I'm seeing 218,000 cases in this country, deaths of seasonal flu, 116,000 for coronavirus, and 204,000 deaths so far this year just from road traffic accidents. Look, we all understand that we take calculated risks every time we step outside our door, and I think that's what we really need to consider. Um, I do want to question why um, it was made a comment earlier. If we are compared to Delta County, why would we get a whole lot more cases if we did more testing if we don't have that many sick people here? I'm just trying to make a comment here. Thank you. Hey, thanks for your comment, Rob. Other I can speak to that if you'd like. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, so those numbers are from an entire year of people dying from flu. The numbers that we have now are from a mere three months. So you need to put that in perspective. Um, and then as far as the other statistics and things go, the, the whole point of this is we're trying to not get to the point where those other counties and states are. Thank you. Good comment. Other other comment? Okay, I, I, I want to make one uh, observation here and a comment. Uh, this document that we're discussing is guidance for parades, rodeo, and fairs. And I think there was one other item that was kind of misnamed, but we, we ought to straighten that up when an issue. Um, but I want to point out, uh, and, uh, Jay, you mentioned it. Not, I'm not. I'm just using you because you mentioned it. But the bottom line is, we are willing to work variances against the orders. We are willing to do different against the orders as long as it's responsible uh, and, and, uh, and well thought out with data and all that. This, uh, this particular order guidance is dealing with ten people. We have already submitted a variant to this already to allow for an event of a larger size. Uh, and that's not to say that we couldn't, and I asked that question to the CDPHE person and, and uh, got the same response, that certainly we can, and, and we should be proactive and go beyond what is currently restricted under the day. That's why the governor's going to consider new rules in the end of the month. Good news is uh, the director, the deputy director, told us that once we have the variant in place, and if the other
better guidance if the state comes out with is more restrict, uh, is, uh, less restrictive, we can go even higher. Or in our case, our, our variance would stay in effect is, is, is the bottom line we got out of that. So we, that's what this is. This is not constraining us. It's still guidance and it still can be deal, dealt with responsibly by the Board of Health. That's each one of us that will consider doing that. Either make it more um, re less restrictive or uh, we could even go back the other way if we just decided that the county conditions warranted it. All right. All right. Wait, just one second, Mr. Chairman, if you don't mind. Can I just reiterate a comment just so we're all on the same boat? If we approve this, and I know we may or may not, but if we do, we're not saying you may not. What we're really saying is if you choose to do it in violation of the orders, you're doing it at your own peril, and if the county is not a party to this and authorizing it, hopefully, A, we're going to keep people healthy if you don't follow the if you follow the rules, and B, we won't lose the potential money that we would get. So I don't. This is not. You may not have a fair. You may not have a rodeo. This is an assumption of the risk. If you want to do it on your own, the board of health, at least me, will not ask anybody to arrest anybody or issue citations. You're just doing it at your own peril. So I just want to say that this is not a you cannot. This is we will not be a party to it. At uh, this if point, that's what, right, and that's what I was trying to point out as well. But, uh, this is just a uh, it's something we can deal with, and we could authorize something that's true that would be more restrictive. But we would sponsor it. But, uh, all right. Any other comments? Before we vote, um, I, I just got one final one again, Ron Beckner. I know that you know we opened up our county per se for Memorial Day to have the lake filled with the people like we did. And I know about a week and a half ago, uh, I'm sorry, at the last meeting, uh, Monday was supposed to be our two week waiting period for all the new cases that could possibly happen because of all the new visitors we had. And I I only heard a couple of uh, people that have gotten tested. I didn't hear of a litany of positive cases. So I'm just wondering. Okay. How do you vote, Jay? I vote in favor of adopting the, the recommendations, the guidelines, uh, as presented by public health. I. Which guidelines? Okay. The guidelines that we've been discussing for the last hour, the parades, rodeo, it's fair, um, and there's some other things in here, but the title is uh, guidances, Guidance for Parades, Rodeo, and Fair. I vote aye to adopt that. Um, aye. Canda, aye.
that's what isn't that the process this document is supposed to be worked with people individually uh, as they apply for for uh, uh, variances or for a greater uh, less restrictions and that's something that we would have to op operate on as a board of health to endorse or not and that's why I voted yay if it, if it means that we're going to constrain it to this only then I would withdraw my vote and say no uh, well, because uh, these I, that's why we have to uh, deal with it because uh, we, you know, uh, if we just let it go, then uh, a, for example, the rodeo uh, right now, how to without that variance being approved, move forward. We need to work it with them and make Chairman, sure that, that be proactive. Go ahead. Uh, thank you. I'm sorry to interrupt you. I really didn't mean to do that. Uh, I think it is underlying in all of this that. If a variance comes down that lessens the restrictions that we just approved, I, I think we've heard over and over today, we instantly would agree to the new restrictions that are, excuse me, the new guidelines that are less restrictive. So um, if you'd like me to well, yeah. make another motion to say that in the event that variances loosen any of these restrictions, that we immediately incorporate that in. I'll be happy to do that. Um, let's, but I thought uh, that was that underlying. That's a very good point. That's true. But see, my whole, my whole issue is that in order to be proposed, we, the Florida Health, have to deal with lessening restrictions. I didn't look at this vote for this guidance as a the constraint. Those, 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 issues, those constraints are already on the people. We're not, we're, 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 that, you see what I'm saying? Yes, the and I, and I absolutely agree. already done that. And I'm I not agree with you. What we're, say, what we're saying by this is that we, the Board of Health, are not going to circumvent any of the state orders, uh, the health, public health order 2028, that we're not going to circumvent them. But if we do everything legally and appropriately, which is what we're trying to do, this is all this is. This is not made up this stuff. It comes down from the state. And if we get a variance that's a legal authority to change the regulation, we change it immediately. I just feel that we would be very remiss if we approved anything that was contra to the um, state mandates, the state orders that came down. And we agreed to follow the state orders, so I'm very proud of us. Well, the, the orders are one thing, Dave. It's, it's uh, understanding whether or not they are, uh, are actually legally binding, and that's why we have the opportunity to tailor a request a variance that says, you know, you get you told a 10, we really think we can do it to 50. And so that's not that's going against the order, but we're doing it by a process that's approved. So that's, I want to make sure the public understands we didn't, we didn't vote to constrain the rodeo at 10 people. No, we, we voted to abide by the state mandates 2028, and we also said that if we, and we've tried hard, our health department has done a wonderful job asking for variances. If that comes in, that is a state approval of a variance, we do it. I just don't feel we should be the one doing a variance without the state authorizing. Oh, okay, this but is we're this saying is a, the same is, thing. Bill, we're saying the same thing. I just want to make sure the public understand this is a good discussion because we we've always our mandate by by law and by the elected official obey the the, the orders and the um, laws of this land and the county and so but that doesn't mean we can't change them and and point out what is unconstitutional or or uh, illegal against a, a, a municipal uh, whatever. So I, I didn't want this to come across like we are already locking ourselves in to being led by a, um, a government, the state government, that cannot, uh, you know, we're, we're living in a democracy here, a republic, I should say, and we have the right to uh, challenge it and fix it and tailor it. And I think we all agree to that. And that's exactly that. what we have done. We've worked within the confines of the law to change the law. It's the right thing to do. 
It's not civil disobedience. It's not meeting on the bluff, raising our hands in protest. It is simply right. we're following the rules established to us to follow the laws and amend the laws within the process of the government. It is the right way to handle things. So I commend you and I commend my fellow commissioners for doing this. Uh, point of order, Mr. Chair. Yeah, Go ahead. Uh, I believe my motion at least deserves the consideration of whether or not there's a second. What well, was your motion? Yeah. He wants to. You need to. You need to pass this out. Well, that, that's why we thought would be the process. It should be available and should be done. Do we need to uh, to do that, Tom, uh, formally, uh, or is, isn't that part of the process that the public health agency has? No, we're the board of health. But we. I know. I'm, I'm talking to the health agency. Direction. But we gave. We uh, we already said this is uh, a proper thing to have. Okay. Correct. I don't have a problem. To disperse it so to is the there a board. second? Yeah. I, I, not only should we disperse it to the entities, I don't even have a problem. We want to put it on our website so anybody well, it can should be. It read it. So I, I'm fine. With, I second the motion. Are you adding to, to, uh, to include that? Tom, yours is pretty restricted to just the people involved. It, it's really a public document. We ought to make it publicly available on the website and specifically in this case, in the interest of time, uh, disseminated to the people that are affected by trade rodeo repairs and livestock sales. Okay, how do you vote? I'll call for the vote. J votes um, aye. J aye. And aye. Um, aye. Okay, gotcha. All right, let's move on. By assumption, are we asking the public health to disseminate that to those organizations? Yeah, that's their job. My I, I would recommend uh, that document be given to Mr. Beckner because he is on this call, not to circumvent the president of the Saddle Club, but I think Mr. Beckner's been more involved. Uh, Diane Rose, president of the Fair Board. Uh, Lance Ingram, a uh, member of the Sale Committee. And I don't know what the hierarchy is for the 4th of July parade, but I would just say uh, to Ashley and Ashley and, uh, and Tracy. Tracy Ballard, yes. Yeah. And Kelly, did you get the name? And Mr. Chairman, may I speak? This is Ashley Franklin. One second, Ashley. Uh, Tra uh, Kelly, did you get that? Repeat them again. Uh, Diane Rose, Chairman of the Fair Board. Actually, it's President of the Fair Board. Ron Beckner, Vice President of the Saddle Club. Lance Ingram, member of the Livestock Sale Committee, and either and or Ashley Franklin and Tracy Ballard for the 4th of July parade. And what are these for? These are the people for who, in my opinion, should receive the document that we just approved and voted to disseminate to the representatives of those four organizations. Okay. And their but, signature. But, uh, but, Mr. Chairman... I would add that I'm assuming because that motion passed, then also that would include the signature of the chairman of the Board of Health and then be submitted to the commissioners for their consideration because their signature is also on the document. That's correct. Yes. This is Alyssa. Can I add uh, George Coons to that list, please, as he is the actual president of the Saddle Club? Thank you. And, and I was going to ask that Ron Beckner be removed off the list, George Coons can get that to me if need be. So just... Okay. Go, go ahead. I'm just going to ask, Mr. Beckner, are you aware, is Mr. Coons in the area? Yes. I've dealt with that. He, he was here, but he had a doctor's appointment that he had to get to because of the length of this particular meeting. He did have to uh, excuse himself. Okay. Yeah, I just meant, is he in the state or is he available? Yeah. Oh, absolutely, yes. Okay. He's back here for the summer. Okay. All right, we need...
Go ahead, Tom. I would just Wait. suggest in that I agree that uh, as president of the Saddle Club, Mr. Coon should be uh, the recipient of that document. Okay. So can I Shall just ask make? for some clarification? Because I thought that public health was going to be sending these documents out. So am I sending them out or public health? No, no. You're just recording the names for the record, and that public health is going to disseminate them. They just, they just need to know to who. Okay. Thanks for clarifying, Kelly. I was in the same boat. All right. Okay, let's, uh, we need to move on. Let me make a, a statement. I know Ashley wants to talk, and we're going to get into the parade, but make, let me make a point that uh, we are actually working to, to loosen the restrictions on the rodeo and the uh, fair and the uh, no. livestock. No. Not yet. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let, let's hold All on right. a second. I Jay, apologize. Go ahead. Stop. We have variances that have been requested for each of those already. And, and they have been worked with the people like we want that are involved, including the parade, the rodeo, et cetera. And I wanted to make sure that's clear. This is not something we're starting from scratch, and we're doing it in a timely manner so that these things can take effect as, as soon as, the, in this case, uh, the next up, uh, I believe, uh, let me correct that. I want to make sure it's next up would be the parade discussion, probably, unless uh, we had it in a different order. But actually, if you want to make a comment, I want you to keep that in mind, that uh, it is being uh, submitted exactly the way you and Tracy and, uh, and uh, uh, Lissa and company have uh, worked with, uh, so that, that it's clear to the public that uh, we are not uh, restricting anything in, with this document that isn't in work. All right, then. Ashley, go ahead. I was just going to say that Tracy Ballard and I, we do want to withdraw our waiver request for the parade. If the county and state do not approve it, we do not have insurance to cover the event. Therefore, we are not going to be held responsible. The, Ashley, that's not what, it, what, what we're, the, the, that document did. Well, it still is, we're working the waiver. If the waiver is approved, the, the county is, is uh, a given. We supported it. And that would not negate the insurance. Okay. Has there been a time limit that we know that we're going to get this back? Because we're literally three weeks away. That's why we asked. We made that point with the deputy director of uh, health that we need it as timely as possible. And I think uh, Liz is on top of this, uh, that with them. So we'll know very soon. This is Alyssa. I need to I need to caution you because I cannot promise that that's what we're going to get. In fact, the deputy director said specifically that they're working on um, the variance request for parade or for rodeos and fairs. But she says she has less information about parades. So right. I I would caution you. Just saying. Sure, and that you can always withdraw and do the. And cancel. That's easy to do. Uh, if we have to, but let's see how it goes. So anyway, Mr. Chairman, a clarification question then. So, do we Go provide ahead. this document to Ashley and or Tracy, or no? I'm not clear on what point. If, if there's no reason why not that I can see, because if the variance is approved it's within the guidelines, uh, you know, and, and it's fine. I agree. Let's. Let's give it to them. I would love to have the parade if it could work out. However, it's really their choice whether to go forward with it or not. That's correct. I agree completely. Okay. Okay, what's next on the uh, docket there on the discussion? Is this a parade? Mr. Chairman, this is Ashley Franklin. We do want to withdraw the waiver. Okay. I'm sorry. We appreciate all of your support throughout this, but we can tell based on the way the call is on the way this call has gone, it's it's not going to be supported, and we're not going to be put in a threatening position by other elected officials that we are going to be breaking laws when these are public health orders, not laws. So that, we would like to officially the withdraw. And have it on the record. Okay, you certainly can do that. So, so are, Mr. Chair, then do we have 
have to, um, I guess it's a question for Alyssa. Do we need to send them an amended variance request? No. Well, that's a good question. Thank you. Well, I think, um, so the way, the way that I put the variance in for this round of variance requests was I, I submitted the parade plan exactly as it was presented to public health. So if the waiver go, you know, if the waiver, or excuse me, the variance, if the variance is approved by the state, then I'm more than happy to let them do it. Um, and, and I'll support it at a local level, and it will be supported at the state level. I'm just saying please be cautious, and especially in spending any more money on it, because I don't get a good vibe from the state. That's all. Thanks. But she has formally requested us to withdraw that variance. But do we need to withdraw a request for a variance from the state, I think is the question. Or amend, which will set us back another, I don't know how many I, I, this, this, this is my, my uh, cut, Tom, just, just a comment. I don't think we have anything to lose by leaving it in. And, uh, she requested it be withdrawn, Mr. I know, Chairman. I know. I know, but my point is, is, is it worth the hassle for us as a county to leave it in? Is it, is what, to me, it, it, does, it doesn't seem to make a difference, so, well, bureaucratically or paperwork-wise. But could, sir, because the folks in Denver who are reviewing this, if we, went, if we don't want this waiver anymore, we need to tell them, ignore that portion of it so they don't debate it, work on it, when we know it's... It's futile. We're not going to do it. Oh, okay, I think then. The responsible then I thing to do is to notify them. I move that we notify them to pull the parade at the state level with a variance. I'll second it. And move the segment to uh, notify the state that we'll cancel the request for the parade variance. Let's call for the discussion. Uh, yeah, I have a question for Alyssa. Alyssa? Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead, thank you. Yeah. Um, so the process here, do we amend the current variance? Do we just ask them to drop that portion? I'm not sure how they will... I'll have to um, I'll have to talk to the people at the state that I submit it to um, because I'm not sure I, my um, my suspicion is that they'll ask me to just submit a new variance. That's that's what yeah. I'm thinking. We'll have to submit an amended variance. And, and my concern is if we do, uh, that's going to set the, everything else back, and that would be a terrible thing to have happen with I people agree. that have worked very hard. So I don't support doing. I have made the comment. I think a phone call would probably be a good thing to find out what their process is. And if they know that we, uh, the, the parade is either up or down, and you know, make from a from a state point of view, I don't think it matters. They they can not process that piece of it. So why don't we just leave it in Alyssa's hands and ask her to handle it? However, she works it out with them. I'm happy to do that, and I'll let you know what. Um, what they tell me. Thank you. Thank you. Do you want to change the motion, Tom, or do you want to be? Uh, uh, well, I would withdraw what my we motion. Would react. Or... That's that's better. So are you I withdrawing the motion? The motion I, but... I second it, and I I accept the withdrawal. Okay. We'll just leave that in Alyssa's hands if that's okay. okay. So, Mr. Chairman, I, I would move that we distribute the document that we approved today to the, to the appropriate uh, representatives of the rodeo, of the livestock sale, and uh, airboard rodeo. Fair. Okay. I'll second it. It's been moved and seconded. Distribute the document to the three entities, rodeo, fair, and uh, livestock sale. Is that what you said? Yes, sir. And I second it, sir. Discussion. I'm really Both. sorry. I, yeah, my, my only comment is I'm very sorry that they're withdrawing this before the facts are in in terms of whether the variance goes through or not. It's such an important 
that part of our community i'm just very sorry that it's happening i understand why it's become a political hot potato and i fully understand why people would say i just don't want to mess with it anymore but i'd just like to tell you i regret that they didn't do it and i want to commend both of the ladies who have worked so diligently to get it done uh at least up to this point yeah and i'll uh echo that i i regret i, I wish they wouldn't but uh, that's the way it is um yeah this is tracy ballard may i say something please sure <laughs> this was um not a last minute decision um to cancel the waiver we were really hopeful that we would be able to proceed with this but we're really sick and tired of putting our necks out on the line and getting a lot of backlash from a lot of people just for wanting to do something good for our community and so forth and i just want to end by saying i've lived in this county for over 21 years and i don't recognize you anymore thank you tracy all right can i make can i make a comment mr chairman Go ahead, Bob. It's Ron Beckner. Um, or Ron. I, I got a, yes, that's okay. I got a quick question. With this document that you guys just approved, that you're going to be sending out to uh, the different committees and heads, if you will, does that mean that we must abide by these guidelines as approved that you guys listed? And if we move forward with the guidelines that we've submitted, which is in, um, and I don't even want to use the word opposition, but indifference, of what you guys have as a variance, um, I guess I want to know what does peril, according to uh, board member Prince's, mean? I need peril defined if that's the case with this document that you guys just approved. I'll respond to that. Hey, yeah, let me respond to that. Okay. What we're doing is we're shifting the burden of responsibility from the Board of Health and the Board of County Commissioners in the county to the various organizations. We're giving you the guidelines that we would like you to follow. Whether you choose to follow them or not is your decision. And if you decide to do something other than what the state has told us to do, you're doing that at your own risk. You can use the word peril if you want. If, for example, an outbreak of COVID comes out because of the rodeo, they trace it back to the rodeo, and people took pictures of more than 10 people, or whatever the guidelines say specifically, and there's lawsuits start filing, the county needs a waiver saying that we instructed you how to do it properly, and, and you either willfully chose to do it wrong, or you overlooked the people who are violating it. The burden goes back to you, it leaves us. Is that clear? I mean, did I, did, did I explain that well? Yeah, I mean, you, you were the person that, that put the word peril out there, and that's the only reason that I yeah, said that. that. And, and I think um, that's right. I, I think you could be, you know, if, if you sanctioned the rodeo, and this is entirely your choice, I'm not telling you not to, but if you decide to have the rodeo, and you said to people, and if people said, well, how many people can be here? And you go, we don't care. And you say, well, do I need a mask? And you go, I don't care. And if they're at the concession stand and they're not 10 feet apart and they ask you, are you okay with that? And you go, do whatever you want. This is America. And something comes down adverse to that, that would put you in peril. I'm just saying, you know, potentially lawsuits could ensue. I'm worried about liability for the county. I'm really worried about liability for the health of the people. That's number one to me. Number two is liability, and three is the money that the county potentially could lose if we sanctioned something adverse to what the mandates from the state are coming down. Uh, it, it, Ron, this is Bill here. I'd like to make a comment on that, too. Yes. Because conversely, you can put your the restrictions you've already put into your plan, and you follow them, uh, whether you wear a mask or not, whatever you're asking. And if they don't do that, 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 that doesn't put you in any peril or risk. You know, if you, if, but if you're doing what Jay said, if you throw everything off and ignore everything, then possibly that could happen. That could happen to anybody uh, right now. If I, if I walk into the store without my mask on or whatever, and somebody wants to throw me in jail or something. But anyway, um, so 
Right. I'm just I'm just trying to figure out if, if you guys have already approved some kind of a guideline that you're going to provide to us, yet we're turning around and providing, you know, what we're calling our, our guidelines, and then you're going to ask for a, a variance. Why are we even submitting anything if you guys are already oh. going to make the posture and stand? No, I think you misunderstood, Ron. We we are not reinventing a guideline. It's the guidelines that exist. That's all that's happened, and uh, we're not asking for any more. And we're and we are working to, to go beyond those guidelines with a variant. All it's just, uh, it's just alleviating the liability. If you, if somebody uh, uh, decided to go rogue after they said they weren't, that's all. Sure, this, this is Melissa. Can I? Go ahead, Tom. Sorry. Okay, I um, so I I'd like to try to clear this muddy water up a little bit. So at this point, let's just talk about the rodeo. So the current variance request that we have has nothing for the rodeo in it because I did not receive a plan other than the PRCA plan before I submitted the variance to the state. That being said, I have now received a very good plan from the rodeo committee um, on how they're going to handle the rodeo. Um, I'm a little bit concerned. I think it's a great plan. I'm not sure how realistic it is that there's going to be that many people volunteering to help out with the pieces of the plan, but that's not up to me. Um, that being said, this paper that we're asking these organizations to sign now is simply stating that right now you acknowledge that these XYZ are the state orders and the orders that Custer County is going by. What we're saying as a whole is that the reason we're putting the, this letter out and having you sign it is so that you can comfortably go forward with planning and, and organizing things so that in hope that the order that we actually get orders from the state saying it's okay to have parade rodeo and fair if those orders don't come through we're not saying you can't have them we're just saying that it's your responsibility if something goes poorly thank you very good, good um, I, I need i need to ask um so if these orders that are currently in place till july 1 if they change, are we going to have to get a new guideline and something that needs to be signed after July 1? Mr. Chair? Yeah, I would, would want those, Ron, a new document that's probably less restrictive. If uh, Who knows what the orders are going to be. I'm not super confident that they're going to be to any of our advantage. But let's say the new orders come out that are less restrictive, then yes, public health would draft another document with those less restrictive points or bullet points in it. Uh, maybe they say, you know what, you can have a rodeo, then this document becomes null and void. We're just trying to uh, do our due diligence based on what we know today. If that changes, I certainly think the Board of Health and the Public Health Agency is capable of changing as well. That, that's right, and Tom, uh, if I recollect right, uh, the director, deputy director, did say that if the order comes out less restrictive than the variance that we've asked for, then you can go to the less restrictive one without any issue. Uh, but if it's more restrictive, then then we would that we would we would adhere to the variance we ordered that they agreed to. Well, that that sounds that sounds good. I'm just wondering, does this apply to just events? So are we going to have all businesses and restaurants and everybody in the county sign this same document? Uh, only, only if they're asking for a variance. May I speak to that? Go ahead, Tom. Thank you. Um, public Health, as I indicated uh, at the beginning of the original motion, has provided the Board of Health. Let me pull those up. Uh, I think there were six or seven different documents uh, and they pertain to, uh, I'm sorry, I'm, they pertain to businesses, they pertain to, to help me out. Uh, houses of worship. Uh, houses of worship. Um, I think there were five or six of them in there, Ron. So uh, my point today was to deal with 
the document that dealt with fairs, rodeos, parades. Yeah. So business guidance, camp guidance, fair, rodeo, parade guidance, gym and pool guidance, life right guidance. So she has a document to cover about all of the entities uh, that would come to the Board of Health and say, hey, what do we need to do? And we would give them the, a document that was written appropriately for their style of business or activity. Okay, and and I guess my my question now being is with all the businesses and pools or whomever have already submitted things, I didn't hear their names and or organizations listed on getting those, and I'm wondering if those need to be put into record to make sure that we're all in this entire county that have these businesses and nonprofits and houses of worship getting the same documents and making the same signature requirement. That's, in my opinion, that is the direction I think the Board of Health intends to go, yes. It is, and that's why I wanted to, dis to, to discuss all restrictions initially and to deal with it, and that if this is the answer for that, that's okay. It didn't mean that in the future we can't have another meeting and have another revelation based on data and facts that says we can be even more in the future, but uh, make sure everybody knows we're not going to just roll uh, the orders. Think about it before we do I'm ready. We're trying to move on here. Let's do it. What's the next one on your ticket that you want to discuss? I was ready to discuss parades. That happened already. And now let's go to the fair and uh, livestock. Let's do them. Well, I thought, I thought that we already voted on that. I was ready to go to the next agenda item. I, I didn't hear us vote on the livestock one. I thought that was the, uh, oh, that was the included one. The motion okay, was to provide them to the three entities, the yes. fair, the yep. rodeo, and the livestock sale. That's right. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Next item. Did well, you guys finish voting on that? Uh, I didn't hear. Sorry. Did you guys finish voting on that last motion that you changed it to the three entities instead of four? I think we did. No, I don't think we did. No, wait. We voted on the motion to withdraw. You withdrew it. I accepted the withdrawal. And we That's right. Gonna, and we were going to let... Um, Miss Alyssa, deal That's with correct. the state and, and how to handle the best way to do it. But I believe Kelly's right. I don't think we voted on the motion to submit it to the three entities versus the four. Uh, I vote that we submit it. We had the motion. We okay. just didn't vote on it. I call the question. All right, then let's vote. Jay? Aye. Tom? Aye. And the uh, aye. Okay, the next item is uh, consideration of opening the courthouse further. Is that correct? Yes. If I may, sir. Go ahead. Uh, so Kelly and I had a conversation uh, about trying to get some sense of what the elected officials and the county supervisors within the county building only uh, felt about moving forward to try to further open the courthouse. And so um, Kelly asked each of the departments to come up with some ideas, and I suggested that we get together and discuss those and see what the general uh, attitude was towards further opening the courthouse. Uh, it's open, of course, under, with certain limitations. So uh, I'm prepared to um, give a report based on that whole conversation with the, the supervisors and elected officials. Uh, I can do that before or after a motion. I guess it's up to you. Let's, uh, let's do it now, Tom. Okay. Fine. All right. So... The recommendations coming out of the uh, meeting of those folks this morning uh, to become effective Monday, June 15th, this is their recommendations to the Board of Health, that we unlock the east and west doors of the county building, we place a significant sign at 
social distance while in the courthouse. Number three, place masks and sanitizers at both doors only for the guests that need them and do not have them. Number four, put into place bathroom cleaning schedule on a regular schedule throughout the business day. Number five, all county building county employees will wear a mask when interacting with the public or outside of their respective offices. Six, purchase hermetic air filter, sorry, purchase one hermetic air filter uh, purifier for each office. And seven, to allow the court guests to enter either the east or west door as they have done in the past. Those were the seven recommendations that come out of that meeting. Okay, that's uh, that's good. That's good on the record. And Kelly, you've got a copy of that already. I did not provide her a copy of my notes. Oh, well, well, I thought you. Uh, oh, those are notes. I thought that they had provided a copy of what they recommended. I'm sorry. They gave those recommendations to me to pass on to the board of health. Okay. Hey, this is Meredith. Can I kind of add something in? Go ahead. Um, so that idea of the mask by the door for uh, the public, um, the clinic tried that early on in this, and people stole masks or took all the masks um, whenever they walked in. Uh, so uh, just as that kind of as a point for the group to know. Thank you. Yeah, we had that discussion, and, and there was also some discussion if everybody, if the Board of Health thought that was an issue, then, of course, as each department does now, uh, we could provide a mask once they're at the respective office. The problem with that, of course, being that social interaction and intermingling between the door and when they get to their respective office that they need to do business in. So uh, I understand what you're saying, Meredith. Thank you. Good point, Meredith. Uh, Jay, Jay, have you got some other comments yes, that we I can just help us question. Question. Go ahead. I have a question. Um, I'm in favor of allowing less restrictions to the courthouse. You know, obviously, it's the center of our business activities. Um, I just want to make sure that whatever we do is in 100% compliance with the current state orders. That's all I want to make sure. I wonder if Alyssa can weigh in on that. I, that's a concern of mine. So has, has Alyssa seen them, Tom? Has Alyssa seen Alyssa? Yeah, we Tom and I discussed it this afternoon, and I, I think that what they have is is within compliance with the state orders at this point. And Mr. Chairman, I'd have no objection to uh, adopting that new the, the, the new methodology of opening the courthouse uh, as long as we're not violating, which we heard we're not. Hey, put it together in a form of a motion, Tom. Well, I would move that we accept the recommendations of the supervisors and elected officials regarding further opening the county building effective Monday, June 15th, as reported to the Board of Health by myself. I hear a second. I'll second it. Okay. And moved and seconded to open up the courthouse according to the recommendations by the employees at the courthouse. Uh, moment, sorry, county building, not courthouse. County building, thank you. Uh -huh. And uh, all right, any discussion on that? Uh, I would just add for the members of the Board of Health, uh, we had two representatives from the courts in that meeting as well. I did not make that very clear. They supported all these recommendations and volunteered to provide any assistance, including PPE if they had it, which they do, as long as they have an available supply. Good point, good input. All right, let's call the vote. Jay? Sir, uh, point of order. Go ahead. It's, uh, been moved. it's an action item. You, I believe we need to ask I, a public comment. I thought we did. Oh, I'm sorry. We commented no. ourselves. Public comment. Go ahead. Um, Ron Beckner again. Is the uh, Board of
county commissioners or somebody in leadership there, are they going to be provided the same document that just got approved for the signing of that as well, that you guys are providing all of us? Are you talking Good about question, that? Good question. That's right. I'm not sure I follow yeah. the question. You want the clerk uh, and recorder to sign a form saying it's okay to do what we just approved? I'm no, he's saying that. Make sure we don't step if we do step step out of the guideline that we're liable. Well, I think we'll handle it exactly the same as if the rodeo steps out of line. We're not going to do anything. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Any other public comment? All right. Let's call the vote. Tom. Aye. Aye. Jay. Aye. Kanda, aye. Kanda, aye. What are you, what are you saying, Jay? I can't hear you. I, I voted aye, sir. I'm sorry. I must have stepped on somebody. Somebody. No, that's not. Okay. Moved and seconded and then approved. Let's uh, open a court to house bet more according to the recommendations provided. Thank you. County yeah. building. County building. County building. So, there, there, I will, in an email, I will draft this up in a, a little more formal uh, format and submit it to all of the elected officials in the county building. Obviously, this doesn't apply to the sheriff's office or other places. Uh, just strictly for the county building was their recommendations and provide copies of that to the Board of Health and the commissioner. Good deal. Hey, Tom. Uh, this is Mary. Can I request that you just send it to every county uh, department head so that everyone can be on the same page? Okay. I agree with that. Yeah. No good, problem. Good, Thanks. good point. Thanks, Mary. All right. Any other comments? I'm going to open this up for public comment on anything. Go ahead. Well, I think we skipped an agenda item. No, we didn't. Oh, what was the agenda? Well, what Mountain Valley Saddle Club COVID plans? Well, that was part of the uh, for the rodeo, wasn't it? That's what I was couched as. Um, I, I'll go point of order. I'm going to agree with Mr. Uh, uh, Flower there that we haven't addressed that yet. So. Okay, I'm sorry. Then I thought okay. I was going to thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, plan right in front of me. So people are too much. Okay, I'm I'm sorry. That's good. I assume that wasn't right. Go ahead, uh, Tom, bring it up and we'll move it. Well, I have no idea. I didn't put it on the agenda. Or, I'm sorry. I meant Ron. Looking at the notes and has Tom by it. Go ahead, Ron. And at this point, um, I do have another board member and rodeo committee member that I'm going to go ahead and uh, she's going to spearhead this. This is Ms. Julie Smith. Hi there. Good hey, afternoon, everyone. Hi, Ms. Smith. Hi. Welcome. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, just as a, a point of reference, my husband and I moved uh, to Westcliff permanently a month ago. Hey, and we, thanks. We've owned a house here for about six years, but uh, just moved here officially. And when I got involved with the rodeo board, uh, because we have been volunteers at the rodeo for the past five years, I have to tell you at first, and Ron might hurt me for this, but I was very skeptical about having a rodeo. But as I went through and I read the PRCA guidelines and then the guidelines that were prepared by the uh, Westcliff Mountain Valley Saddle Club, it became very apparent to me that we are taking every precaution we possibly can to mitigate the risk of the spread of the virus. Uh, you know, I, like everybody else, I'm, I've been dealing with the spread of the virus uh, in my capacity as a president of the Midwest region or a uh, electrical distribution company for the past three months, understand, uh, I can't even tell you how much I understand, how much I've lived, what it's like to have opposing views on what you should do uh, in line with COVID. So I feel for everybody on this call, and Alyssa, I can't even imagine what you've dealt with or what the other chair people dealt with in making some very, very tough decisions. But this decision to move on with the rodeo is the right one. Uh, so I do appreciate the, the items that were discussed today. 
uh, the things that were passed. But I know that all of you have had an opportunity now to read through the guidelines. And I'm wondering if you have any recommendations, suggestions, and what your thoughts are uh, on the guidelines that we've provided. Alyssa, I appreciate your comments. Um, I do believe that we will have the volunteers covered. We have gotten a tremendous amount of support from the community as we call for uh, donations and for sponsorship. It's really been amazing how much the community has supported us. So your comments and your guidance and input is very important to us. And with that, I, I hand it back over to, um, to all of you to get your thoughts on what we've presented to you. This is Jay, if I may respond. Uh, Smith again, welcome. Um, Thank you. I, I spent a long time reading the proposal, even though I just got it with yesterday, day before. And I, when I finished reading, I put it down and I said, this is extremely well written. The guidelines seem very appropriate. I think the entire, and I just don't want to say Rodeo, who else would have dealt with it, did, a, did an excellent job coming up with a great plan. And the only thing I could say is I certainly hope the state comes back and says, bravo, well done, get on with it. And that was the way, that's how I feel about it. Other Thank you. Comments? Thank, thanks for the input. That was very good. Uh, and thank you, Jay, for your comments. Uh, other comments, Tom, before we go oh, well, I appreciate it. Somebody mute a mic. Somebody got an open blue, mic. Please. Joined us for the saddle 
It, it is myself and Julie Smith. Okay, I thought you said there were two others besides yourself. My, my apologies. Any other comments? Mr. Chairman? Go ahead. Thank you. Melissa, go ahead. Um, so I just want to be clear that the county has accepted this proposal, but in order for it to be like, you know, totally legal, we still have to put it into a variance, which I will do um, as soon as, you know, as soon as possible. Or, I don't know, I guess we, that's something we should talk about, whether we should do it now or just wait till after the first one, the new, or just come through and push it, um, push it through then. Um, I thought, but, I thought we had decided to do things now to uh, get a head start on all the items. Maybe we, uh, the last meeting, and we were waiting for them to submit their plans to do so. Uh, uh, that's my understanding. Tom, or Jay? Yeah, um, this is Jay. Um, I think Alyssa's point is well taken, and I was going to mention it also. By approving the plan does not give you any, doesn't mean you can go ahead and execute the plan. It means that we felt the plan was acceptable enough and appropriate for the Board of Health to send to Denver for um, a waiver or variance, whichever term you like to use. So, uh, yes, uh, I feel I would ask the public health to send that at the earliest convenience possible. I agree. Thank you, and we, we understand that. Uh, we just wanted an opportunity to submit this and to have the variance submitted. So thank you for, for your consideration and for being willing to do that. You thank you, Alyssa. We appreciate Absolutely. that. Good job. I'll get it in before I leave today. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I I had a question when I read this document. I, I'll, I'll guarantee you I'm probably the only one on this call that doesn't understand this, so I apologize for my ignorance. On the page uh, that's entitled Disaffecting Process Continued, and then a, par or an, uh, a section of that called Drive-In Area Viewing, and then the third to the last bullet said sanitizing stations and portable restrooms will be positioned within walking distance and then in parentheses were the capital letters SDS. I had no idea what that meant. And, and thanks for bringing that up and that's why I put it in parentheses. If you can go back to and I've got to Oh, so the documenting standards, sorry. There you go. That, yeah. That's my, my social distancing standards. I did refer that. Yep, that you, was Ron, referred to at the beginning of that. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Oh, All right, any other questions we can move forward? If not, then I'll call for the vote. No other discussion? All right, let's vote. Jay? I vote. Let's accept it. I. Uh, Aye. I accept it too. Aye. Okay. So finished up the last business item. Let's open it up for some public comment on other items that, or this as, as they have developed. So go ahead, public. This is Meredith. I just have one comment for Tom. Um, Alex and I can work on a press release for the county building to be open. Um, we just need to know that recommendation. Okay. Um, so whenever you get that to us as soon as possible, we can get that out for the public yeah. to know. And we'll put it on the Facebook and the website. Okay. I will do that before I leave work tonight. Awesome. Thanks. Other comments? Yes, Bob Hollingsworth. I'd just like to say that from what I have initially listened to some of the Board of Health meetings. This one's been very good. There's positive vibes on both sides and I appreciate everybody working together to try to get things moving forward. God bless you guys. Thank you. Thank you, General. Thanks. Thanks for the comment. Thank you very much. Other comments? I believe um, let's see, Suzanne Ferry, did, are, you, are you still on? Uh, yes, I am. All right, and, and I think uh, I don't think people know who Suzanne is. She's a resident of Rosita and feels strongly about things uh, moving forward as well. And, and uh, it, it asks for a, a comment time. If, if you'd like to read your comments, you sure can or not. You well, I had a comment um, from C.S. Lewis. It's 
taken from the book God in the Dock, and I think he expresses things far more eloquently than I ever, I ever could. It's about three sentences long, and if I have your permission, I'll read it. Go ahead. You asked for time, you bet. Okay. Of all tyrannies, a tyranny sincerely exercised for the good of its victims may be the most oppressive. It may be better to live under robber barons than under omnipotent moral busybodies. The robber baron's cruelty may sometimes sleep. His cupidity may at some point be satiated. But those who torment us for our own good, will torment us without end, for they do so with the approval of their own conscience. The end. Okay, thanks for your comments, and uh, thanks for your, uh, your letters as well. Anybody else? Move to second adjourn. So be it. Let's reserve, uh, re adjourn, and uh, move forward. Thank you very much for everybody attending. Oh, I did that the last time too. Sorry. How do you vote, Jay? I vote. I. You want to Jay? I to adjourn. Tom. I. I can to hear. So let's adjourn. And thank you very much for being here for the last two hours and thirty-two minutes and forty-one seconds.